Polygamy in the African culture. It's time we understand the parameters on which our ancestors practice polygamy. So we don't live under the delusion that promiscuity, which we are witnessing in the African men or the African Igbo men, somehow equates to polygamy. These are two separate things that has been corrupted and antagonized. Now, amidst the recent social media family feud, uh, we, that we are witnessing amongst the Dutchies. It has not removed from the fact that polygamy as an African culture didn't serve a purpose for ancestors because it did. Now, in this current time, era, and age, is the parameters for polygamy still applicable? And do we, the younger generation, understand what it takes to be polygamous? Because the problem isn't that the man can be polygamous, but can he handle what it takes to be polygamous? And sometimes we even forget that even women, or even the women, if they refuse to be polygamous, or if they refuse to be counted as a statistic in the marriage, they can freely leave the marriage and they won't be antagonized. Let's take an instance from what is happening amongst the duchies. We need to understand the ridiculousness of how y'all, is handling this situation and we also need to understand that yo isn't practicing polygamy he is practicing promiscuity and sugarcoating it under the umbrella of polygamy and this is the lack of accountability that most african men have refused to take note now for the younger generation and for the younger men who wish to engage in polygamy it is essential that we understand the parameters on which polygamy is acceptable in our own culture now first of all except the widespread of of cultural acceptance surrounding polygamy polygamy was practiced as a way for families to preserve their cultural and ancestral traditions which in those times most families grew into a community or a clan therefore they were fostering a tribe through polygamy now the widespread or the cultural acceptance surrounding polygamy is focused on fostering and building a tribe now the second one here is social status in most cases a man's social status and wealth may influence his ability or his decision making to have multiple wives because he can comfortably take care of his family and also uplift other families who may not have the wealth or the status that he has. And in this case, we also need to remember that this is as a result of the communal togetherness that we experienced or we practiced in ancient Igbo society as against capitalism, which is basically solely individualistic. Now the third one, fertility and procreation. The ability to have many children is often valued in our society as in the Igbo. Polygamy or polygamous marriages may be sought to ensure the continuation of the family line and to have a larger workforce for agricultural or economic activities. Hence, instead of outsourcing for farm aids or laborers, a man uses his family as his workforce for economic development of his uh, of his wealth or resources now the fourth reason or the fourth parameter is alliances and unity and polygamous marriages can serve as a means to strengthen family ties and alliances the idea that multiple wives and their children have a united extended family, fostering a sense of unity and mutual support. If you cannot have this in your family, you don't have any reason engaging in polygamy. It has to foster a sense of unity, a sense of alliance. So if you, as a man, if you cannot keep your family together to be able to maintain this alliance and unity, you don't have any business engaging in polygamy. And also note that time also note that this was a time of incessant communal wars in in those days the time when polygamy was was more um, popular it was a time of incessant communal wars which men were the primary victims so to ensure the safety and protection of the family unit it makes rational sense to procreate and have more children even though 
even though the, uh, the older men or the older children will die during communal war. So you have to basically replace them. Now, the misuse of this word polygamy and the misuse of this practice, this cultural practice polygamy, is one of the reasons why African women why Igbo women are strongly against it. It has been adulterated from a means to an end to having access to multiple women without having the adequate means to take care of them financially and emotionally. Again, those that carelessly and callously engage in polygamy do not take into cognizance the emotional and mental health of their children and their spouse. Even though we live in a time where emotions are really, really complex. Now, at the end of the day, we need to understand the basics of polygamy before championing it. Now, before I conclude, I want to even make this statement. Because somehow, our men use polygamy as an excuse to act right. And they tell you it is going to give a, be a means to an end to the side chick menace. Now, whoever think polygamy is an excuse for side chick menas or is going to basically end adultery is you're yet to face reality because the only antidote to this is self-discipline honesty and having emotional intelligence which is basically understanding that infidelity is an emotional torture on your spouse and it is also a silent killer to your spouse now i tell people that the only reason why polygamy has a strong root in our society is because it favors men it favors a particular gender. So what happens here is that they no longer take into cognizance the parameters on which a healthy and a wholesome polygamy would occur. But because it favors, you know, because nobody wants to be disciplined. Everybody wants to live their life the way they want it. But it doesn't work that way. Because it's in marriages, it becomes, it moves from one person to two people or three people. So you have to basically take into cognizance how your action affects those other people. And if they are angry or if they are lashing out, they have the right to also lash out. Because you are not going to beat a child and also tell that child not to cry. When you beat a child, the only rational thing for that child to do is to actually cry. So this is what is actually happening here. And we need to take cognizance of these parameters and basically try to act right. To be able to foster a wholesome and a healthier society.